Hey guys, I'm your host, The Age of 41, and welcome back to Let's Play Dream Daddy. In the last episode, we went on a, uh, uh, a gym date with, with Craig, with Keg Stand Craig. And, uh, if I recall, it's been a, it's been a week since I played this, okay? I can only record this Wednesdays. Uh, if I recall, we're gonna go see, uh, the teacher. Yeah, the teacher. Forgot his name. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Dad tip, do it once, do it right. That's that's a good tip for, for any any member of the family. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks at me up and down with heavily lined eyes. He is an edgy looking, edgy looking fellow. <sighs> Come on kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, you're gonna help me or we're not. <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. Shaw. I head up the stairs to walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. I need a voice for him. Uh, Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Hmm. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Lolly. This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student's desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm? Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catching in the Rye, Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Or not, I, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Both. You know, budget cuts. Right. Hmm? Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Please, call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu Peter Tarrant meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Uh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, b but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Eh. I just wanted to ask, is, is everything okay at home? We did just move, and that, that can be a strain on people. I, I moved five years ago, so I would, I would know. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh, okay, they didn't move that far. Ah. See, if you could talk to her about it, I would know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. 
I don't know. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Uh. Anytime. My way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Uh. Yes? They ever catch that rye? <laughs> oh. Yes. All hearts came out of him. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life. Especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I could talk to her about what's going on. Eh? I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. <laughs> so, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. The cat, mine is the catcher and his is the rye. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Sorry, my neck is really stiff. I gotta crack it. Hopefully that's not... Uh, captured on Audacity. Uh... I guess we'll go to the mall, because I assume that it wants me to go to a new location. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? <laughs> will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And, and that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, uh, but also, sometimes, it's, uh, go it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations, <clears throat> and maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. A anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is, it's that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? <laughs> Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Uh. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Hey. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just... I want you to know that you could talk to me about anything. Ugh. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Ooh. Manny keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Ah. Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Hey. Noah. Mmm, a boy. I don't like this. My little girl's growing up. <laughs> Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Mm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Whoa. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would... Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Yeah, it is. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. He leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. I don't think you deserve that thing. You're being awfully standoffish. Eat a balanced meal every day that includes vegetables, fruit, and proteins. No. We have all arrived. We evolved at the at the rive at the mive, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Um, mall security guard's favorite activity. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yeah. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. 
Heck yeah, better. Mm. I I would prefer you go with Hades, yeah, or Purgatory, yeah. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. It's like a Cinnabon. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? <laughs> I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese, ew, from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. We have to eat through the pain. <laughs> We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, Ick. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <laughs> God damn it. A question I would never ask in real life. <sighs> Which meme? All. All memes. Oh, Amanda no. sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. I hope she starts with Shrek. The, the, the dankest of the memes. Dad, it's it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train. But just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? God damn it. Dat boy. Ugh. Dad, please. Oh. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Mm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being exact representation of the establishment? I... I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one. Alright. Mana runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline from the back. For the back. There it is, you can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so... Proud? Speech! Amanda. Speech! Hey. Speech! 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 All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <coughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for joining us today. Here today to commemorate a his unhistoric movement moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Dipstick had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead, goth, and beyond, to buy a rainbow suspender, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which today, to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Yeah. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head in shame. <laughs> oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts and not chain wallets, I try to find something of interest myself. Not much for a dad to look at and got dead off and beyond. Well, if it's like a hot topic, you can look at the Rick and Morty stuff. Uh, band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs. Check the clearance bin. I'm gonna go with ironic coffee mugs. I'm already, I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. I don't know who this person is, so I can't give them a proper voice. Look! This is very important to me! Over here, oh, it's Dracula. It's Alucard. I don't play Castlevania, so that reference probably uh, was incorrectly used. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. I could see that. 
don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Oh my god. Uh, I already have a snooty British voice for uh, Joseph, but this guy looks like he would be like a snooty British person, so I don't know. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I could give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Hmm. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying or something like that. I am the manager. I oh. see. Well, it would seem that I've outstayed your, my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will have received a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dead. Man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. Can't tell if they are if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Mana trops up to me with a t shirt in hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Uh. Hey Dad Tron five thousand. Yes, I'll buy it for you. God damn it. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Mana plops his shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. Uh. I love your hair. Cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? Cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Man and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool, Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite! Bet it's on Animal Planet. Oh hell yes, they have to make it over the Canadian Tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. Also the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Calum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Sorry, my earphone came out. Oh no, ghost! Or I can't do a Canadian accent, so they're just gonna be rednecks. It's not accurate, but whatever. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer on them there damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try to communicate with the spirits. All right, Gary Busey. He's Gary Busey now. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, oh my got it! If you listen carefully, it sounds like a saying: "You're going to die." That's because we're about to die, you! This is art. It is. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Ah, fast time. Debate about evolution, dear. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Caleb and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl to bed and get a good night's sleep. Don't eat too close to your bedtime. I don't... I think we might stop the video here. Just... I don't know, this seems like a good stopping point. Let's see what happens when I wake up. Yeah, we're gonna stop it here, so I will see you guys next time on the next episode of Dream Dad, a dad dating simulator. I'm your host, The Engine 41, signing out. See you next time.